hello everyone so today we are going to start our crystal forms so in the last lectures we have done our crystal elements we have done our symmetry elements and now we have to start with our crystal forms now what is this crystal form so these crystal forms are nothing but they are a group of similar faces or a group of faces which have a defined relationship with your crystallographic axis and they these faces are related to each other by symmetry so all right so they have a defined mathematical relationship with your crystallographic axis okay so maybe your one plane is your e or you can say one face is parallel to your vertical axis or you can say that one of the faces is cutting your horizontal axis so this type of mathematical in relation exists between these groups of faces and these uh, crystallographic axis so they together uh, make your crystal form so a crystal form is a set of crystal faces that are related to each other by symmetry okay so definitely when there are uh, relations with crystallographic axis there is going to be exist some symmetry as well so these crystal forms related to each other by symmetry a form refers to a face or a set of faces as i told before that have same arrangement of atoms there are there are similar faces thus the number of faces in a form depends on the symmetry of the crystal every crystal system shows typical group or groups of faces developed on individual crystals which besides occurring in an orderly manner show identical mathematical relationship with the crystallographic axis any group of similar faces showing identical mathematical relations with crystallographic axis make a form okay so obviously minimum number of faces required to make a form are two definitely you cannot make a form by one face you need at least two forms or sorry at least two faces to make up a form okay now let's uh, look at the categories in which these forms are divided or in which these forms are categorized so before starting with our first category that is simple and combination forms let's uh, have a brief look at these uh, miller indices we'll be doing these miller indices uh, in the further lectures but for now i'm just giving you a short introduction about this miller indices because we are uh, using it now so this uh, hkl is actually showing the relationship of one face with the crystallographic axis for example the, these are your crystallographic axis if there is a plane which is cutting your uh, b axis maybe and is parallel to your c axis so how you will represent this one how you will define this Uh, relationship that it is uh, intersecting your b axis but it is parallel to your uh, c and a how you will represent this one so for this representation we need uh, these miller indices so uh, if the general symbol for a face that cuts all the axes is different lengths is hkl and for hexagonal system uh, it is hkil so hkl a general representation okay of a plane or of a face who is cutting all your three axes is your hkl okay for just for now only understand this one because we will be doing these miller indices and everything in the further lectures okay for now so now let's move on to your first category that is your simple and combination forms okay so what is the simple form when a crystal is made up of all like faces very simple for example if you have a cube okay in a cube you have all the squares all its faces are square they are like to each other that's why it is a simple one this is an uh, octahedron shown here see all the faces of these octahedron these are all triangular that's why these are your simple forms then you have combination forms combination what does it means combining two things together okay combining one or more things together two or more things together so in combination forms when a crystal is made up of two or more simple forms so when you combine two or more simple forms so for example you have your uh, triangle at one place or oh, sorry a square at one place you have a triangle at one place when you combine them okay so for example you have a prism somewhere you have a basal pinacoid somewhere then when you combine them you get a 
combination form okay so more than two simple forms are combining to get a combination form okay the next important one is general forms and special forms okay so what are these general forms before starting this let's us know what is uh, what is your restricted uh, and unrestricted forms okay so restricted means there is some restriction unrestricted means there is no uh, restriction okay so the indices which i taught you before that is your hkl that is going to be used here okay so when you are saying that it is an unrestricted form it means that if there is a face it can cut your crystallographic axis at any length okay it may cut it in one unit it came it may cut it at two units it may even not cut it or it may even be cutting it at infinity okay so there is no restriction in this one all right so there is uh, this restricted uh, sorry unrestricted forms in which there are no restrictions okay but when you talk about restricted forms there are certain restrictions over them okay and what kind of restrictions are there these re restricted forms are neither special nor general okay so in these restricted forms part of their index as i told you before there are three h k l there are three axes okay one is cutting at h one at x and one h one at l so a part of the their index is can be variable okay you can variate them you can uh, cut it at one units or two units but one of its index is fixed okay that is there is restriction in one of its index so for example in a prism okay l must always be zero okay and in your tris octahedra of cubic system h must always equal to k so there are these type of restrictions so these that's why they are called as your restricted forms and when there are no restrictions these are your unrestricted forms okay now let's start with your general form so this is a form in particular crystal class that is unrestricted in magnitude so this general form can cut your axis anywhere so the magnitude so if there is a okay if 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 want it can cut your axis as one units if it want it can be parallel to okay so there are no restrictions in the magnitude okay at which the uh, face is making any intercept on your crystallographic axis okay then you have special forms okay so all other forms that may be present are called your special forms okay apart from your restricted one so it has the form symbol hkl hkl means it is cutting your crystallographic axis every crystallographic axis the face should be cutting okay uh, in general form what was there it may intersect or it may even intersect in infinity but here there is a uh, it should be intersecting each crystallographic axis at some point or other okay okay only one possible set of value exists for the indices hkl okay now let's move on to your open forms and closed forms open means there is something which is not able to enclose everything that's why you are telling it it is open okay and when you are saying it is closed it means it is enclosing your whole space it is closed by all the sides that's why it is closed the verbal meaning of these words are same as their definitions okay so just see in a closed form it is a set of crystal faces that completely enclose a space okay whatever faces a form is having it can enclose all the space i mean they the faces of that form are enough to enclose the space and thus in crystal classes that contain closed form a crystal can be made up of a single form okay it, because what what we just uh, saw that in single forms there are like faces if there is a square then every one will be a square okay so there is no need of another form and there is no need of another combination to enclose a space why because the faces of a closed form are enough for enclosing a space okay so that's why a closed form can be made up of a single form see the word can be made up of a single form because in a single form all the faces will be enough for enclosing the space so this is a closed form see this is a cube all the faces are enclosing okay from all your how many sides six sides okay so it is enclosing hence it is a closed form now there is open form okay this is the opposite of closed form it means that in this form 
whatever the faces are present they are not able to enclose the space completely okay in an open form is one or more crystal faces that do not completely enclose the space for example your pinacoid okay so in your pinacoid you are having two faces only two faces are there so are they able to enclose the space completely no because only two uh, faces are present here that's why it is an open form open form see these pinacoids prism pyramid we'll be looking at another lecture just for now understand this in a form where the crystal is unable to enclose the whole space there it is your open form and where it can enclose whole space completely that is your closed form now let's look at your holohedral form so in this form in a crystal system it shows development of all the possible faces in its domain whatever domain it is having there the development of all the possible faces is for example if there is an octahedron in its domain all the eight faces are developed in the crystal that's why you call it a holohedral and the most important thing in holohedral is that the highest symmetry in a crystal system is shown in your holohedral forms okay whatever the highest symmetry is shown in the system in that crystal system the highest will be shown in your holohedral forms okay generally holohedral forms develop in the crystals of highest symmetry in a crystal system such class of highest symmetry in a system is called its normal class so in a crystal system whatever class is having the highest symmetry that class is known as the normal class of this system okay now let's move on to your hemihedral forms okay so in your hemihedral forms what is happening these hemihedral forms have the half of the faces which were present in your holohedral form for example in your in the holohedral form of octahedron there were eight faces so in the hemihedral derivative of octahedron there will be four faces so hemihedral forms are the derivatives of your holohedral forms and whatever faces are present in the holohedral form half of the faces will be present in your hemihedral form okay so it shows as the name indicates only half the number of possible faces of a corresponding holohedral form of the normal class of the same system why we are telling it normal class because holohedral form has the highest number of symmetry so in hemihedral half the number of holohedral are present as such all hemihedral forms may be assumed to have been derived from your holohedral forms a hemihedral form develops due to decrease in the symmetry of a crystal so definitely if the faces are decreasing the symmetry of the crystal will also decrease okay octahedron is the holohedral form and tetrahedron when only four faces are there it is the hemihedral form of your octahedron so octahedron is your holohedral form with eight faces and tetrahedron is the uh, hemihedral form of your octahedron with only four faces it has only four faces and occurs in crystals of tetrahedrite class of isometric system which has a lower symmetry than the normal class okay definitely it is going to have a lower symmetry as compared to your holohedral form okay now let's have a look at this diagram this is your holohedral form of your octahedron you can have a look there are your eight faces okay there will be your eight faces and when you come to the derivative of the holohedral form this is your tetrahedron with four faces okay so there will be your four faces this is one this is two one be uh, one will be at uh, here this is one that will be two and this will be your three this will be your four okay what i was telling you there is positive hemihedral form okay if this is your positive one you can have a same one conjured here too similar to this one okay similar to this one if this is your positive this is your negative when you'll combine both of them you'll get your whole octahedron now getting what is your positive hemihedral form and what is your negative uh, hemihedral form okay now let's move on to your hemimorphic forms so at the beginning you had holohedral then you just half the faces and you get your hemihedral then again you have the faces of hemihedral also and then you get hemimorphic 
so for example in the beginning if it there were eight then in the derivative there will be four faces then again in the derivative in the hemimorphic there will be half of four there is two faces okay so it is also derived from a homohedral form holohedral form and has only half the number of faces as in hemihedral form okay in this case however all the faces of the form are developed only on one extremity of the crystals okay if there is uh, your axis axis okay if this is your crystal axis all your faces will be developed only at the one extremity of the crystal not at the other end and hence we say that there is no center of symmetry present in these type of crystals okay being absent from the other extremity at only one extremity the uh, faces are developed in the another extremity there are no faces developed okay in other words such a crystal will not be symmetrical with reference to a center of symmetry because there will no center only at one extremity all the faces will be developed that's why there is no center of symmetry in your hemimorphic forms remember it okay this is the example of tourmaline okay you can have a look at the top and bottom faces and you will find that uh, only at one extremity the development of faces has taken place so another very important one is your enantiomorphic forms so enantiomorphic forms what is happening it is composed of faces placed on two crystals of the same mineral okay in such a way that faces on one crystal become the mirror image of the form of faces on the other crystal okay so what is happening two crystals are there and they are the mirror images of each other okay so an enantiomorphous form is composed of faces placed on two crystals placed on two crystals of the same mineral if it is quartz then both the crystals of quartz will be taking in such a way that faces on one crystal becomes the mirror image of the form of faces on the other crystal despite that both are mirror images of each other though having an identical mathematical relationship and one form cannot be interchanged with its counterpart on the other crystal okay we know that both are mirror images of each other they have both uh, identical mathematical relationships but if you if you are willing to change one form of your one crystal with the another that is not possible as right hand and left hand having similar relation to the body axis are not interchangeable so is the case with enantiomorphous forms okay the forms and the corresponding crystal showing these forms are referred as left and right handed crystals of quartz show best developed enantiomorphous forms okay have a look at this quartz crystal this is your quartz crystal this is uh, one your a this is your b or you can call it as your left one or your right one these are two different quartz crystal you can have a look they are totally identical to each other i mean they are both mirror images of each other so so these are your enantiomorphic forms so with this we have done the very important categories under your forms of crystals in the next lecture we will be looking at some more common forms that is your prism pinacoid pyridians and all okay so till then whatever doubts you are having you are free to ask in the comment section okay thank you so much mm -hmm.